Welcome back to the Seriously Dough Podcast. I am Ken Platt. And I'm Shane Haffey. And we are talking cinnamon bread today, but before we get to that, I want to thank you for watching today. Thank you for listening, but also please make sure that you subscribe, whether it's to our YouTube channel or to anywhere where you listen to podcasts, whether it's on Spotify or Anchor or Google Podcasts, whatever. I mean, we, we're really glad that you're listening um, and, and also giving us feedback. That, that was really a lot of fun this past week. I had one of our listeners, DJ, actually, I used to take a spin class from DJ. Okay. She was my spin instructor, and no one would ever come to the class except for me and maybe one other person. So it was just usually DJ, like, barking at me, telling me <laughs> to pedal faster. Um, and ironically, now she is, because I coach CrossFit, now she's one of the people that um, I coach in CrossFit sometimes. So, so payback. Right, payback. <laughs> the, the tables have turned. Uh, but what she did is she, she listened to our last episode about... Um, about the when I talked about the hands, the Easter hands, the bougie Easter hands, yeah. and uh, and she goes, I, w- I walked into Wegman's and I walked by the case and I just started cracking up because because that's what we talked about. So we love your feedback. We love that that you you tell us about that and what you think about the show and and what it kind of brings up. I know another listener, um, Laura. She she also commented just what her Easter traditions are, which yeah. was really cool. So it's good to hear those things from you. Yeah, and if you if you bake one of the recipes that we post, uh, feel free to share that as well. We love seeing those. Our friend Tupper posted his hot cross buns that he made, and uh, we just like seeing that. And don't be afraid if it's a mess up, you know, still post it, and we'll just teach you a little bit about it, or or not. Or yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm too, the but. king of mess ups. We're going to talk about that later. That's uh, <laughs> follow us on Instagram, and you'll see my mess ups. That's right. Uh, or follow us on Facebook. But uh, yeah, I, I feel like sometimes when I when I show up here, like you've got these gorgeous bakes and mine are uh, it's like subpar. Like last time, your 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 um, hot cross buns were gorgeous, and mine looked like something a a second or a, a kindergartner kind of drew and was like, "This is what I think a hot cross bun looks like." It was like all. Bleh. <laughs> I've said it before. It's it doesn't matter what it looks like. It matters what it tastes Absolutely. like. Absolutely, and primary. And they were and they were really really good. Um, but I did start following some other bakers on Instagram. Yeah, and they make things really pretty. Yeah, like really pretty. So we are uh, hopefully we can eventually live up to to those expectations. And we're honest here though too. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna be real about the mess ups and the struggles that we have and things like that and talk about them and try to help one another out and give you some tips too. Uh, so hopefully you learn and you grow and just get out bacon. That's all that matters. Absolutely. And uh, just one last housekeeping thing. I think, I don't think I said this yet, but if you could, if you're somebody who listens regularly, um, wherever you listen to your podcast, go ahead and rate us, like give us some reviews, uh, yeah. right, take, uh, we, we would love if you would gift us with the review to, to take just five minutes to just type it in real quick and say, Hey, we like what they say. It'll be like, or if you don't like us, you could tell us that too. We're, we're pretty thick skin yep. I mean, we're pastors. So we receive criticism. It's part of the job. Yep. Um, <laughs> just make it anonymous and throw it in the offering basket. That's right. <laughs> we'll, we'll put it in the circular file, which is known as the garbage can. Yeah. Um, just, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> we don't have those. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, so we're talking cinnamon today and uh, cinnamon that, I I found I learned some stuff about cinnamon first of all. So we started with cinnamon. So the our, the last episode we said um, cinnamon bread. So we it was just basically whatever we thought. Yep. And uh, and so I started we started digging into where cinnamon comes from and what it is and what it's used for and some some lore behind it. So we can talk about cinnamon real quick. And uh, so one of the things that I learned. So cinnamon, if you didn't know this, there's actually two kinds of cinnamon. Um, but there's one that we don't use, and there's one that we do use for the most part. There's true cinnamon, which we rarely use. Right. Um, and then there's another cinnamon, which is, I guess, a lesser cinnamon. There's scientific names for it, and it's just not me. Yeah. Um, but right. what, what cinnamon is, if you didn't know this, is it's the inside bark of a cinnamon plant. So they peel off the outside bark, they peel off the inside, and then they let it dry, and it curls up, and that's where you get the cinnamon sticks. Yeah. And, um, and then the cinnamon sticks are pulverized and ground down and that's and that's what you have cinnamon from yep yep and it goes uh, as far back into ancient egypt too uh with cinnamon and uh, they contract the uses for that not so much as a uh eating spice like a flavoring spice but the ancient egyptians the pharaohs and the kings and uh those they would use it as an embalming spice you know because nothing is better than the smell of 
decay and cinnamon. cinnamon. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, it goes all the way back to there. And then, uh, I mean, it was used mostly as that, like the aromatic, like the smell of it is, is so wonderful. Um, but then up into really, what is it, early 1900s is when we start to see it become into more popular uh, in the cooking uh, realm and the baking realm. Uh, but a lot of it too was uh, back in Sweden and was it Germany? I think it was. They kind of butt heads about who created the cinnamon roll and and that. So they they go back and forth and debating on who who uses that. And, yeah. Well, going back to the, what you said about the embalming. Yeah. Is the 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 property the the chemical that's actually in cinnamon that will give you like this idea is you've all heard of formaldehyde before right oh, yeah. and that's yeah. and that just has the most lovely smell i think if you've ever been in a <laughs> in a biology class where you had to die we had to dissect a cat um and a frog and a worm did you ever dissect a cat not a cat i did uh a frog and my frog had eggs really and it, oof, it was gross oh, it was that's that's a party. tough day there we uh we named our cat we <laughs> named our cat roadie oh. i mean i have some really macabre stories about that. i mean we just i mean we we just, anyways, but formaldehyde is like smells awful. Yeah. But the cinnamon, actually, it, the the chemical inside cinnamon that makes it smell the way it is called oh, cinnamal cinnamal cin, cinaldehyde. Oh man, cinnamaldehyde, cinnamaldehyde. That, yeah. So that's a real thing. Yep. And they believe that that cinnamaldehyde is what contains the properties that actually not a, not just good for embalming, but are actually good for a bunch of other things too. Yeah. Um, one of the things is cinnamon's anti-inflammatory. Right. Some inflammation's good. Like inflammation's good because it helps to repair tissue. But when we start getting too much inflammation, we, um, you know, it, things are bad. So cinnamon can be an anti-inflammatory. It can be an antioxidant. Yeah. So it's got some really good health properties. Yeah. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to use as justification from now on for eating large quantities of cinnamon yeah. rolls we're, and we're cinnamon here for bread. Your, we're here for your health. That's yeah, why we're here. The one hundred percent. So, hey, if you ever say, if someone ever says, "Hey, you're eating too much cinnamon buns or cinnamon whatever," send them our way. Yeah, we'll let them know. There's there's health properties to that. I don't know if the health properties out will it, like the two teaspoons of cinnamon that's in my bread is going to outweigh the yeah. half a stick of butter and four cups of flour and a half a cup of sugar, but. Yeah. Hey, we we can dream, right? Yep, and we'll educate them on cinnamonopolis. 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 Yeah, we're really good with words around yeah. here. Uh, so, tell me about your favorite cinnamon bun that you've ever had, and yeah, so I've eaten quite a few, mm. um, but there's one that sticks out. If I think about it, just right off the bat, the one. The, the best I've had, hands down, easily, comes from a donut shop in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, mm. called Orm's Donuts. And Orm's has been there since 1938, and th their cinnamon roll is um, part of their original recipe. And so this recipe has not changed since 1938. And the thing is huge. It's like this big. Oh, it's, yeah. it's basically, like, to describe it for people that... Because we think cinnamon buns, and we think of like cinnamon bun right off the yeah, bat, yeah. or like Pillsbury cinnamon buns. This is like a donut that's about that big, and a cinnamon roll donut, and then it's glazed like a glazed donut. Oh, and wow. it is it's so good, and that's the go-to whenever somebody from Beaver Falls comes to visit us, or we're out visiting family, we stop there and make sure we get one. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. There's this place in the Smokies in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, um, called Crockett's. And so if you've ever been to Crockett's, one of their signature things is, again, one of these giant cinnamon buns. But not only is it a giant cinnamon bun, but they, um, like, pan fry it. Okay. So it gets, like, a crispy outer coat. Oh, my goodness. It yeah. is so amazing. Well, I mean, this place, Crockett's, in, in Gatlinburg is, is a really, really popular um, spot. We actually went last June. Um, while everybody else locked down, yeah. uh, me and the family were like, let's go to the Smokies. And <laughs> I don't know who's judging me for that right now. That's fine. You do you. Uh, but we, we went to this place called Crockett's. And I one of the things that I love to do every time I go to a town is, like, I need to find the best food. Yeah. So I, I, do, I do research upon research. And my wife's the driver in our family because she gets car sick. 
So I usually sit in the car and like research where are we going, where are we eating, where are we going, where are we eating. Uh, but but I saw these cinnamon rolls online. I was like, we have to go. Yep. We have to go Gotta there. Try it. And the all the breakfast was really good. But my daughter Sayla got the cinnamon roll, and. Sayla is by far the smallest member of our family. Yeah. And so the the way that this, and I'm going to post this on our Instagram. I'm going to post it on our Facebook. I'm yeah. going to post this picture because it was phenomenal. It, she, and, and Kinley got one too, so my, so my oldest daughter. But the cinnamon bun was enormous. It was almost as big as her head. And, like, we have this great picture of her look, looking down at it with, like, her <laughs> eyes, like, bugging out of her head. Yeah. And it was as good as advertised. It yeah, was, it was nice. phenomenal. But I think, um... When you think about cinnamon rolls, because I do cinnamon rolls on Christmas morning. Yeah. And you do cinnamon rolls, and that's it's kind of a family treat, but the pop-open kind. Um, I don't think I'll ever make pop-open again now that I'm more comfortable with yeast. I yeah. think I'll start making them on my own. But uh, what's your favorite part of the, of a cinnamon roll? I am the... Oh, so it's almost sacrilegious to say not the center, right? Mm, but yeah. um, mm-hmm. I do enjoy the crusty outer... You do. Ring. Yeah, I enjoy that a lot. Um, but there's something about the center, too, that just... Uh, yeah, like obscenely gooey. And that's one of the things I love about uh, Cinnabon, which we which we said before, is they have one just in the mall in our area. Um, it's a little kiosk in the middle, and, and it's hard for me to walk by a Cinnabon, a Cinnabon and not like partake in it. But yeah. my grandmother, um, before she died years ago, um, she, she dieted a lot, and I remember... Um, getting one. I was in Florida and I got a cinnamon bun and my grandmother was like, she's like, do you know how many calories are in that? I was like, don't care. Yeah. I really just <laughs> don't care. And this is the thing. If you're going to eat something like this, if you're going to eat a cinnamon bun, if you're going to eat like cinnamon bread, like don't like lose the guilt. Like you don't, don't, don't feel guilt about this. Like enjoy that food. Yep. Enjoy the flavors. I'm That's a very right. strong believer that the like, God put all these flavors in the world so that we could enjoy his creation. All, all so, things in moderation, right? That's right. That's right. Now, if you're eating them for, like, every other meal, and you know, you're going to have a problem. But, yeah, I'm a warm, gooey center yeah. type of guy. Uh, it's understandable. You like this part, then. Uh, yep. Yeah. The more gooey, <laughs> the better. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so I, as I was thinking about this stuff, too, like cinnamon, you know, another cultural thing I was thinking about was... um. <laughs> The cinnamon challenge from a few, from a oh, few yeah. years ago, yeah. And so I brought I brought I brought a teaspoon a tablespoon of cinnamon for you to. I'm just. Kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> have you I'm done just, it? I have not. I've had friends do it. So I was youth pastor at the time when that was gone out. Yeah, and, that'll happen at a youth uh, meeting. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> it happened numerous times. Uh, my one friend uh, CJ, he uh, he did it, and I, I was wondering if he was gonna die like it was that it was that bad and he he took the the teaspoon of cinnamon and it just cemented in his mouth oh and he just it went you know the dust got him coughing and all of that that was not good but hilarious that's yeah that well then that's <laughs> and that's as hard like you don't want to you don't want to laugh at somebody else's pain, but at the same time, if it was it's like self-inflicted and there just wasn't a lot of thought, yeah, like it was just stupidity. So like you, you play stupid games, you get stupid prizes, right? Yeah. But for those of you who don't know what the cinnamon cinnamon challenge is, is you is you put a tablespoon of cinnamon yeah. like directly into your mouth, and you have to you have to swallow all of it without dying, yeah. which like. Now, when I say it out loud, it just doesn't sound like a really good game to play. Not a good idea. But it's impossible. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever actually been able to do it, but the fact is cinnamon is so dry that it soaks up all the... So please don't try this. Um, If you want to, you could type it in on YouTube and, like, type in Cinnamon Challenge, and you'll see, like, people just choking on cinnamon. If you do try it, take a video and post it on our Facebook Yeah, please do, (laughs) so we can laugh at you. No, uh, um pray for you I, yeah. I don't really know where to go from here so we're let's just talk about uh let's talk about our cinnamon uh let's talk about our stuff let's talk about our cinnamon stuff and yeah definitely. you want to go first yeah sure so i uh i've just made a cinnamon swirl bread again i went to sally's baking addiction i think it's just because i clicked on that link last time and then when i looked it up again um when we had said cinnamon bread uh one of the things that i just love is i love cinnamon toast like yeah, cinnamon beautiful toast on cinnamon sugar on toast yep. and um if you get a really good piece of bread and you toast that and yep. warms it up and then you put the butter on and the butter melts it, it 
so good, yep. right? Cinnamon sugar toast. Um, and we, we make it a lot for um, our kids at times. Luke will go through seasons, and then I take a pizza cutter and I – I'll cut the I'll cut slices in the in the bread so it's easy for them to yeah. to consume. Um, but I thought, you know, I'll just make a I'll just make a cinnamon swirl bread because I, I do want to start working with yeast more and starting to learn how to make a proper loaf of bread. Yeah. And um, and so I did that on Saturday. I think it was Saturday or Sunday afternoon. So Sunday afternoon, I came home from church and I started to make this. And um, actually, your wife came over. Yeah. on sunday night and so I, I actually i thought shane was coming that was saturday that was saturday yeah. okay so yeah. i thought shane was coming um but he didn't know he was invited so <laughs> so he didn't come and uh and so anyways his wife got to try my failure so what happened was is i i um i read through the recipe and one of the things that she suggested was that you heat an oven to 110 degrees and then when you go through the first rise, so you make the dough and you put it in the bowl and you cover it and then you put it in that warm environment that that you've created. Right. And um, and so I waited the hour and a half, two hours, and I pulled it out and it the dough had just exploded, like yeah. it had expanded furiously, and it, it filled up the entire bowl. Yeah. And um, it was very gooey and very so I punched it down, I put it out, and I rolled it out, and then. Um, Put the cinnamon on it and rolled it up and put it into the the, the bread pan for the second rise, and um, and then I had to go I think to baseball practice or something. And so I asked Renee to 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 do the rest for me. Yeah. Um, and she said when she pulled the what was covering it off, like the top like kind of ripped off and the entire thing just went. Yeah. And uh, she she put the butter on the top and, and popped it in the oven for me anyway. And I got home and it was the saddest looking. Oh. I I saw it on the baking rack and I was like, "What happened? Like that is not what that is supposed to yeah. look like." Because it was it was not round at all. It was like caved in and flat. And so my sister and my mom they're very experienced with bread. My sister you know has sourdough starters and yeah. so they're very experienced with bread. So I texted a picture to them and I said, "What happened here? Yeah. You know, like this is the well." And they said, "Well, what's your process?" And I said it, my mom said, overproofed. Yeah. You overproofed the dough. And I said, again, like, I'm an amateur. Like, I don't. And I said, what does that mean? She goes, it was either too warm or you're, it rose too fast or too long. Yeah. And I said, yes, I know what I did. Yeah. And she said, my mom just said, it's got to rise at room temperature. Yeah. Um, so I tried it again on Sunday night. Um, but you know what? Medina did try my failed loaf. And she insists that it was really good. They do. They taste right. good like that way too. They might not be the prettiest thing. Right. But... Not the prettiest thing on the face of it, but yeah. but it was what it was. Um and so and so I did it right the next day. Yeah. And um I let it rise slowly and patience. Like patience is such a it's such an important thing with this with the process of working with yeast. Like you cannot rush it. And and so I let everything do what it was supposed to do and um, put put it in the oven, and then as my youngest were going to bed, um, I called my older two and my wife. Like I was like, "Here, come on, let's, yeah. let's go to the table." And and uh, we had this warm like loaf of Eat the bread. Whole thing, oh, right? we it's gone. it can it was we didn't get the whole thing. We yeah. did, we could have easily because yeah. my son was like, "Do you think we could like eat more?" And I, <laughs> I said, "We probably shouldn't eat the whole thing," yeah. uh, but. But yeah, so so he so we 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 ate that and it was so good. We have we have honey but honey cinnamon butter, yeah. Um, at at home, so we put some of that on. It's good. It's good. Now next time you do this, Liam, you can tell your dad. Well, whenever I eat cinnamon, and it's good anti-inflammatory and antioxidants right. in it. So so I need that third helping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of the other things that I was I was thinking about, like with with the oven trick, I use that trick all the time. But I go until it, because most ovens, the when it starts to register the temperature, it's right at a hundred, and then once it starts to rise above a hundred, that's when you start to see it. I turn my oven off right at a hundred degrees because okay. I'm like that. That's warm weather, you know, no humidity and and stuff. And right, then right. I'll put it in. Um, the other thing that I was thinking of that I've had that happen where it collapsed before is, and 
when that has happened to me is when I forgot to add salt. Oh, and because yeah. that's an easy thing because it, it, bread doesn't take a whole lot of salt. Usually it's one teaspoon. It's still gone. Yeah. How's, you'll have to edit that out, I guess. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, where should I pick up at? Bread doesn't. Oh, yeah. So bread doesn't require a whole lot of salt. Um, it is, uh, you know, usually like a teaspoon or two teaspoons sure, yeah. most. And it's easy to forget to, to put it in, especially if you put it in the same place that the sugar goes. Like you look at it and be like, oh, yeah, I put the salt in. Um, and you don't know until the final bake. And when, when you finally bake it, it'll rise and stuff like that, like normal. But when you bake it, it'll collapse just like that, that loaf you did. So, but it sounds like you know pretty well that that was the overproofing. Yeah, and it was, it was so obvious in the way that the dough looked after, but between the two, between the two rises, it's yeah. like the one, it was like, it was like the dough like literally exploded. Like it was a gremlin in the microwave or something, you yeah. know, like just, and, and then the other one, the other one was just this beautiful like round ball that I was able to punch down and, yeah. and turn out and knead a little bit and. Yeah, so that that was really good, but it's interesting the salt. So I, I've so when you bake with butter, often the recipes are call, call for unsalted butter. Yeah, um, I generally don't keep unsalted butter at home, so okay. I just use salted butter and use a little bit less salt. Um, uh, if it calls for a teaspoon of salt, I'll use half a teaspoon of salt just yeah. because of the high salt content in the butter. So that that might be something too, like because um, you don't need a lot of salt. Like you can. I think you can get away with that. Like that, I think that's a good ratio to use. Um, we do keep unsalted butter. That's mostly because most recipes call for right, unsalted right. butter. So we keep that uh, for whether I'm baking or Medina's baking. Um, one of the things that I do, because we always refrigerate and I always forget to take the, the, yeah, the butter out yeah, of the yeah. fridge to get it to room temperature. Um, I throw it in the microwave for 10 to 15 seconds yeah. just to soften it up. It, it doesn't melt it at that point, but it makes it, room temperature soft yeah luckily i i have for both these recipes i forgot to consciously take butter out or i did take butter out and then someone saw it on the counter and they threw it back in the refrigerator and i'm like what is happening yeah. where's my soft butter <laughs> uh but but luckily we had um table butter enough table butter that i was just able to scoop it out and plop it in yeah um but i guess i'll just start carrying unsalted butter at home yeah. and make sure that no one no one likes it anyway so yeah um and uh, and I used I used uh, two percent I think for the two percent milk for the first bake. Okay. That failed miserably, and then whole milk for for the second two yeah. loaves. Yeah, whole mi whole milk always makes it better. Uh, <laughs> Every butter, better. whole milk, full fat. That I mean that's the way it was created. That's you right. Couldn't, you couldn't, <laughs> can't pull any of this stuff out yeah. anyway. Let's try yours. We All right. Yeah. It. Sure. Also, I'll cut into it, and then as I cut into it, I will show our audience who's watching on YouTube. So again, um, if you're watching, you can watch. So uh, what I've got here is uh, I really love it because it's got a like really nice sound yep. to it. Um, and and when you cut into it, it's nice and soft and it's got a nice. So I'm gonna cut a couple of slices. So that we can really get a sense of, I mean, look at that. This, we've got some beautiful white bread here on the end from when I just pinched off the, uh, the, the loaf so that it could, so that the cinnamon could be, could be shown. So what do you call that part of the bread? I call it the end. What do you call it? Well, there's the heel. Some people call it that. And then the butt. The butt. Yeah. The butt the of the butt bread. Of the, I'm sorry. That's just too much for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's my here's my cinnamon loaf. Actually, this this loaf, if you look at the picture, if you if you're if you're on YouTube and you're watching, um, this loaf actually came out a lot lighter in the center than the other loaves that I made. So I wonder if I just missed out on my cinnamon. Or so there's that for you if you'd like some butter. Oh, yeah. mercy! Drop the butter dish. So I'll let you do that. Now that I've fondled your knife. So when you um. I'm just going to go half. I'm going to cut it in half here. All right. I'll take that other half from you. There you go. Yeah. Um, so when you roll it out, do you flatten it and then roll it up long ways, or do you roll it up end to end, or? Yeah. So, so so it baked in a nine-inch pan, so it I rolled the I rolled the dough out 18 by 9, um, and I and I used just a, I mean, just a wooden rolling pin that was floured, and I floured the, uh, 
flour the the, the I use a silicone baking mat which has oh, cool. just been so amazing because it lays flat um, years ago my mom gave me a, uh, a pastry mat that was canvas mm -hmm. that you had to not it just wouldn't after you wash it it just doesn't stretch right okay. anymore so I would it would it would take massive amounts of Herculean strength to stretch this canvas out every time I needed to use it again uh, so the silicone baking mat has made baking a million times easier and i got it from pampered chef okay so i really like that so what are your thoughts on this delicious yeah it's good um yeah i don't know like i don't know what to say like it's the cinnamon like you were worried about the cinnamon ratio it comes through strong yeah um delicious the bread texture all of that is fantastic that would make some amazing toast. Yeah. Well, I'm 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 glad that that it's good, and I was worried a little bit about it just because you know it was this I, I failed on the first one. The second one was really good, and this third one's cooled. You know, mm -hmm. the the first one I ate like right out of the oven. So this one's been this one sat overnight, and so I was I was wondering how it would be. But yeah, it's really really good. Yeah. Um, are you finding that people now that they've People who are listening to the podcast or seeing your baked goods on on Facebook, they're they're asking you to make you stuff, make them stuff. No, <laughs> no, it doesn't happen too much. Um, might just be because I'm still new here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that that might be what it is. I I usually bake something. Me or Medina bake something mm -hmm. for the Wednesday night Bible study that meets at our house. Um, but for the most part, nobody's been bold enough to ask me to bake them something so yet. do you hear that everyone uh be bold yes yeah. ask, ask shane to bake you something i have um, trouble saying no to that so <laughs> <laughs> i might be in trouble are you have you done the enneagram before like have you ever dug into that a little bit uh not not that particular oh, no. that's another conversation yeah. for another day <laughs> yeah. um <laughs> people who can't say no oh uh, no I, I usually when it comes to certain like for the most part i have no problem problem but <laughs> if somebody's like hey that looked really good can you bake me one i would definitely have trouble well saying no and to that's that. a, one of the things about baking and when you are the person that bakes is that you Part of the fun of it is seeing people enjoy, enjoy it. Yep. That's like my favorite part, hands down. To bite, like when I made this loaf the other night, and I invited Renee and Liam and Kinley to sit down with me and eat it. Like, I I did not care what it tasted like for myself. Yeah, I I was looking at them going, was it is it good? It was good, and and Liam and Kinley Kinley goes. Dad, you have to make this on Christmas from now on. Yeah. And, and Liam's like, this is amazing. Yep. And Renee, like, same thing. She's like, this is so good. And so that's when you know. I, part of part of the joy of baking yep. is the peop, the other people. Like, it's in, it's good to enjoy it yourself, and yep. I think there's that. But it's, it's really amazing to watch other people enjoy yeah. what you've worked so hard on. Yep, that's so, my favorite part. And yep. I, I love seeing that. And it's not fishing for compliments or anything right, like that. Right, it's just yeah. a... Something natural about it of, like, I made this for you. There's that specialness yeah. of it. And, yeah. I uh, really love that, too. So Tell me, tell us about your star. Yeah, so I, I made uh, the cinnamon bread star. Uh, I got the recipe from King Arthur. Uh, King Arthur's website is filled with bread recipes, and I've never had a bad recipe on there. They have tips. They have everything on there fantastic website fantastic resource uh go on there this is one uh that i've made before and it's been almost a year and a half since i made it yeah. uh and i was hungry for it so that's why i kind of <laughs> went ahead and made it um this is a perfect example of something that is super easy to make that looks wonderful like they call it a show it's like a showstopper um but the process of it is super easy. It's probably, I, I was telling you earlier that it's probably just as difficult as yours, if not easier than, than what your bread was. And, uh, it just looks nice. It's pretty, it, you know, it's gorgeous. And if you, if you're not going to look on our Instagram or anything like that, if you're just listening, um, it, it's got the shape of a star in the middle. The bread's all twisty, beautiful. His egg wash is phenomenal. I mean, it's just a really, really beautiful bake <laughs> yeah basically it, it's a pretty basic dough uh that you make you let it rise once um and then you separate it into four different equal portions roll them into a ball let them rest 
uh, for 15 minutes, and then you flatten them into a 10-inch circle. Okay. Uh, so four 10-inch circles, and that's the hardest part of this recipe. I don't know what it is. I might need to go back to kindergarten to figure out how to roll a circle out. The temptation for me is to just roll it into a big um, rectangle and then cut a circle. Yeah. Um, that's my temptation, uh, but I'm trying to work on getting it to roll into a circle. Uh, 10 inches even is what, what you want. I had one issue where I did that and it was just full on rectangle. I couldn't get it into a circle. And so I, I took that and I rolled it back up and set it off to the side, figured out I'll, I'll save that one to last. Well, when I went to roll that one out, I had an issue with, it kept wanting to shrink back in. Oh, so yeah. I had, I had stretched out the gluten and then it was trying to stretch back in on itself. And so that was a little bit of a struggle. But basically all you do is you take the base layer, you put egg on, on it, just a regular egg, brush an egg on it. Then you take your cinnamon sugar mixture and spread that out on it. Then you put the next layer on and you do that all the way up for four layers. And the fourth layer, you leave the top bear on it. Um, one of the things that I did different this time, which I've never done before, is I use Vietnamese sugar. Hmm. Um, which is a strong, intense, sweet yeah. sugar. You use less than conventional sugar. Um, so I'm interested to see what it, yeah. it tastes like. Uh, but then you use a circle and you cut, uh, like I used just a cup. I set the cup down, indented the top, and then you do 16 cuts all the way through down to the bottom uh, around the, the circle. And then you take them and you counter twist them and put them together and uh, let it rise again for an hour, and then you bake it off. Yeah, uh, egg wash on top, then yeah. bake it off, and so it is. Uh, it's yummy. Uh, you want to give it a try? Yeah, absolutely. So I, <laughs> I'm gonna. It's, a, it's good to talk to you, but the best yeah. part is eating. What? <laughs> Don't do this at home, but I'm gonna treat you. Oh. oh, oh, are you really? All right, so if. So you you can't see what he's doing, but what he's doing is he's cutting out the best part, which is the center. And uh, he's but what's great is that now that it's cut, is that the outside pieces probably break a little easier. So you can see the different layers there of it. I'm sorry, I'm fingering that all up for you. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> go ahead and give that a, a go. Oh man, that looks so good, and it's super soft, and it's got that crunchy egg wash on the top. Oh, yeah. That is really, really good. Nice job, Shane. Thank you. It's got a sticky, it's got very much a sticky bun texture yep. to it. And um, that Vietnamese sugar is, it, it definitely has a, a different um, a different flavor yeah. to it that, that complements the cinnamon really, really well. No, so I, I misspoke, and I knew I was going to do this. It's Vietnamese cinnamon. Cinnamon. Yep, not sugar. And it is different. Like, it doesn't taste like conventional, like, regular cinnamon. Yeah, it tastes different than my store-bought from Dave's Super Duper no-name brand cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I used. There was nothing special about the cinnamon that I used. It was just cinnamon. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even, like, McCormick or anything. It was, like, I don't know, best yeah. best every day or whatever. So this is going to sound weird, but the the best cinnamon I've ever had a lady at my previous church was a Raleigh salesperson. So Raleigh's being an old ointment company, like that had the salves and the, you know, medicated ointment and stuff like yeah. that. Turns out they sell spices too. And their cinnamon was just out of this world. It's just so good. If you know a Raleigh salesman, reach out to them and ask them for some cinnamon. It's just so good. I don't know what's different about it or what makes it better, but. Yeah, so mine tastes a little bit more traditional cinnamon rolly, mm -hmm. uh, that, and that's just its own thing. It's it's, it's cinnamon bread. You yeah, know? and that's what's great about it. I saw one of the comments on our Facebook page before we were getting ready to record this that asked, "Can I add cin uh, Can I add raisins to oh, the yeah. cinnamon bread? Mm -hmm. Go for it. Try it. See what happens. Usually, you have to adjust some, you know." ingredients and things like that and well this i mean this recipe called for raisins yeah i just opted out yep i mean it's just a matter of throwing it in when the dough's being mixed yep um you know right after you throw in the flour you throw in the raisins and they just get folded in yep so yeah that so yeah man nice job this was a good day this was a good day this is a good way to start my day
So this I, might be my favorite. So far, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, hot cross buns are good, and Irish soda bread goes good, but this uh, this is amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, this is dangerous. Like, the, the other one's <laughs> like, you can have a piece and be like, yeah, that was Yeah, good. yeah, that, that was good. nice. But was... this one's like, I'm going to keep eating yep. and keep eating. Exactly. And we can justify it now because of all the great health properties of Wonderful. cinnamaldehyde. <laughs> well, thank you so much yeah. for joining us yeah. today on the Seriously Dill podcast. Uh, we are going to be doing white bread next time. Yeah. Just straight up white bread. And it may not sound exciting, but if you've ever had a really good loaf of white bread, then you know that there's something a little more to it. It's different. And there's uh, one of the best challenges, a lot of like professional bakers in that, that they judge other bakers is on the quality of their white bread sandwich loaf and it's you know that's how they look at other bakers and see if you can make a good solid white sandwich loaf bread you have a good chance of being a good baker and so uh we figured that would be a one a good challenge for us to see you know what we come up with what what recipe we end up using uh and then to encourage you to uh, most people start their baking process with a white sandwich bread loaf and so we'll we'll talk about that uh mike I was thinking as we were going through this episode, maybe bring the pan uh, that you bring, uh, that you bake in. Okay. Um, I have a special Pampered Chef stone uh, bread pan that I love dearly. So yeah. uh, I had one before and it broke and I felt like I lost an appendage. <laughs> so it's because that might be a little dramatic. That, that was pretty dramatic. <laughs> I think you baked a few more loaves than I yeah. have to. But but I, when you have a tool that's really useful, yeah. when it when it's gone, you're like, oh, now what? Uh, so uh, first world problems, right? Yeah, that's right, that's <laughs> right. But we look forward to that. And yeah, that'll I do. be a good one. Yep. And then I think in a couple months, uh, I think we should. I think in a couple months, maybe like, uh, we. Sh I was thinking about we should have our daughters on and do like an English high tea. Okay. And do scones. I think that maybe once schools cool. uh, schools out. Once schools out, that might be a little have easier. A little tea to... party, <laughs> right? That's right. That's right. Grown men yeah. with beards <laughs> having a tea party with their daughters. Wonderful day. That's the that's the true test of a man. Can I you, got. Can you have a tea party with your daughter? I got a perfect thing that we can make. Um, so my cousin, listener of the show, Brandon, he uh, sent me a gift in the mail of a star mold for bread to make like little tea sandwiches and stuff. With. So we can do that. Oh, that's awesome. All right, so that's what's coming up in the next couple episodes. So make sure that you subscribe, make sure you like, rate, share, review, whatever you can. Yep. We we uh, we love what we're doing right now, especially today, man. The cinnamon bread is phenomenal. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna end now and probably eat some more bread. Yep, we're gonna. Um, but we are so glad uh, that you joined us today, and we hope that you have a phenomenal day. God bless you.